What up, y'all? Working on a truck today. And um, so, figured I'd take this time to, uh, ooh, it's windy, to tell you guys about a couple concerns I have with uh, <clears throat> my dear friend Justin Padini, um, who, while we agree about, about, we agree on pretty much nothing whatsoever, um, I do care for the dude, um, I believe he's a good person, and um, last year, uh, Justin Panini got scammed for a very significant amount of cryptocurrency, um, I think by someone within this movement, um, and I made several videos about uh, what happened, um, they're on my YouTube, it's better, so this is a 6.6 .6 turbo diesel Duramax, I'm replacing the uh, thermostats, there are two on this truck, so it's going to take a while, so I'm going to tell the story. <clears throat> I hope it sounds okay. It's kind of weird. Okay, let me move it again. So, I've known Justin for several years. Uh, Justin and I have done a number of podcasts together. Um, and I, I podcast because I want to. Um, sorry to suck you. Because I want to. I want to. Uh, you know, figure out. I'm not really interested in doing infield in baseball with people, right? And so after after a few times, I'm giving everyone a heart attack. After a few podcasts with Justin, I got kind of bored because he just kind of wants to talk about, <clears throat> you know, his occult knowledge, and um, and he just wants to kind of like talk, you know be around people that agree with him and don't challenge him on any of his beliefs and just kind of like listen to his wisdom. Justin thinks he's the third smartest person in the world, which I know he says it, it, it says it as a joke, but he's definitely wants to be considered the third part of smartest person in the world. That's for sure. Um, so, uh, so Justin's a comedian, right? Um, I've, I've gotten in several debates with Justin. Uh, but they aren't debates. They're just kind of him telling very loudly um, what he knows. And if you agree with him, you know, you're, there's, there's, he doesn't listen for, for one. He absolutely doesn't listen whatsoever. So he won't listen to anything you have to say. <clears throat> and then uh, he just uses a lot of fallacies. And on my on a podcast, you can see on my YouTube, um, he admitted he had never been formally trained to debate or never had debate in high school, didn't know what fallacies were, didn't understand that there were rules to debate. And, um, you know, he thought, he thinks everyone's scared to debate him, but anyone who is willing to debate, if they watch any of his content, will immediately not want to debate him anymore because it's not really a debate. It's just kind of a, a yelling session. And in the past, Justin has, um, I need to start working. So in the past, <clears throat> Justin's debated like libs, you know, and like normies and stuff. So it's easy as like a truth or a libertarian who is articulate in any way, it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, smash a lib in a debate. And so we've only really seen Justin debate libs or, or people like heavy, deep occultists, um, you know, and, you know, and it's still, Justin still uses a lot of fallacies in his arguments with these people, but it's, he's on our side for the most part. So, 
you know, it's kind of funny, you know, you kind of think, oh, is he just joking or trolling this guy, or is this a bit, because Justin calls himself a comedian, um, which he is, <clears throat> he is a very good comedian, uh, I'm not trying to say he's not a comedian, he's a funny dude, very funny dude, um, that's a part of why uh, he's so, um, it's a very endearing um, quality he has, so, so, um, so, <laughs> there's a, so where, where am I going with this? So Justin, Justin um, hits me up, you know, at some point, and he's like, hey, um, you know, like, I really want to get into crypto. Oh, no, Justin was anti-crypto for a long time. But one of the only things he ever came around to and like, because um, at first he was very anti-crypto and would kind of say all the normal things no coiners say, you know, about how it's like some sort of NWO plot to get us cashless, which means, you know, blah, 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 blah. So um, deep conspiracies. Um, so, so he finally, someone, you know, like I, I talked to him a lot about it, but I think, think finally someone maybe else got to him. So he hit me up and he was like, hey, I know you're like pretty good with crypto. You know, can you help me um, get into crypto? And I was just like, sure. And I just, you know, I gave him a, you know, a CRO link, you know, so he could get a crypto card and get a wallet. And um, I had to, uh, you know, walk him through how to do that because um while justin's really 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 like top five top five in the world gamer video gamer um he's not really good with new apps and stuff which is fine i understand that uh everyone's not really good with good apps so i help him get the app and explained him how to use it and um he started buying crypto and uh and I was just kind of, you know, giving him the advice I generally give people. You want to have like 50% Bitcoin, 25% ETH, and then like alts. But like, you know, you don't want to get too crazy on the alts. Just kind of giving him ballparks for staying safe and and stuff like that. And um, then a few months later, um, he tells me he got scammed for all his crypto. And that's when... You can go watch my other videos. There's three of them. Um, I think that it's hashtag Liberty Movement Crypto Scam. Uh, so, um, I need a screwdriver. So, 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 uh, so that starts all that, right? And then, you know, Justin fell into one of the, you know, typical crypto scams um, where he, you know, someone told them, told him, hey, you know, you should put your money in this, in this app and it's going to just like triple your crypto in like a month. And like I, I'd warned Justin about anything. I was like, look. You know, like you can make your own, I want you to make all your own decisions, but you should run me, run them by me first, just so I know, you know, just so you don't make any drastic decisions that are completely wrong, just because you're new to this and you're not, you know, as savvy, you know, as I am on the crypto stuff yet, you know, so he knew and I was like, don't, you know, like people are going to, everyone in the world is going to try and scam you out of this. So you need to be really careful with it. And so a couple months later, he got scammed. And he told, and I was just like, dude, I was really, really, uh, really upset. Um, because it's like, if he had mentioned anything to me, I would have stopped him and he didn't tell me about any of it, um, for like quite a long time. So... <clears throat> So I was obviously super upset that he got scammed because I, you know, I, most of the people that come to me who actually like are willing to put effort into getting into crypto, you know, like I, I tell them all right, like I explain to people how I lost like seven Bitcoin, 
you know, ever I've fallen into every scam coin and app, you know, I've come across it. I work as admin to two of the biggest crypto pages on Facebook. Like I've been dealing with scammers uh, left and right since since I first bought Bitcoin when it was $270, $280. So, so like I tell people, you know, I, I, I don't tell people how to be millionaires. I just show them all, show them all the mistakes I made in crypto. Um, and there are so many of them, you know, there are literally countries that are devoted to scamming crypto from people. So anyway, Justin falls for the scam. You could go watch those videos. I thoroughly cover it in, uh, in those videos. So time, some time goes by and Justin had always been telling me about how, um, him and a bunch of other like, uh, truthers, kind of like known truthers in the, uh, truther movement are going to be, uh, everyone's going to be putting money together to buy a piece of land and, um, everyone's going to go out there and live there like the typical, you know, like the third idea you get once you go, like once you get, once your eyes are awoke, once your eyes are opened and you see, you know, fully see what's going on with society, of course you want, you want to start like finding liber other people around you that are similar, uh, in that similar place. And communal living is always something that comes up in the Liberty movement, but has yet to work once, um, successfully in any way whatsoever. It seems like, you know, maybe something somewhere has, but I haven't seen it. And I've been, um, in a few situations and it's just too, uh, us libertarians are just, or us truthers or whatever, we're, uh, we're a certain personality type and that certain personality type does not work well in groups. <laughs> um, so, so Justin's like, you know, and, and Justin knew that I had like the Phillips Ranch project where I, I, I bought some worthless piece of land out in uh, the desert here in California and tried to homestead and basically failed um, because I didn't realize how expensive it is to go live in the middle of nowhere, uh, above all. And um, the land I bought was right next door to a, uh, to a drone assembly testing and flying facility like uh, Reaper drones for the military. They test them right there. And so I started trolling these dudes, um, and then they like, uh, ransacked my place. Um, they had like a, they had like a private security company and they like, you know, I'm not, not going to take my kids out to the desert, that place anymore after that. So that was, that was a colossal failure. Um, so, you know, like I've made mistakes trying to homestead, trying to live off grid. Um, you know, I lived on, I grew up living on sailboats and boats and stuff. And so like, I have a certain skill set and resourcefulness um, that works well uh, with agorism. So anyway, Justin knew I had, you know, I'd done some, done some stuff like that. And he was like, he had told me a couple times, <clears throat> oh, we're thinking of getting some money together, getting some land. And then one day he hits me up. He's all, dude, I bought some land. And I'm like, oh, shit, you bought land already? Like did you go look at it? And he's all, no. And I'm like, what? Like, bro. <sighs> like, you can't just... Um, so I was like, oh my God, dude, are you kidding me? You bought, you bought some land sight unseen, some really cheap but very large piece of land if you get a piece if, you, if you're buying like 30 acres for like 30 grand that's like worthless land right that's like desert garbage land you can't live out at unless you have a million dollars so or millions of dollars really because it's it's crazy expensive to live out in the desert just to keep yourself cool just to have a refrigerator it's very expensive um 
shockingly enough. Um, off grid is not cheap. People think, you know, oh, I'm going to go live off grid cheap. That's not how it is. So, so I'm like, holy shit, bro. And he's like, um, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, where? And he was like, I, I don't even know. And I'm like, what, dude? <clears throat> you don't know where this land is you bought? I'm like, this is really not good, bro. And I'm like, are you like paying payments? And he's like, no, I bought it outright. And he's like, yeah, we're all going to go live out there. And I'm like, I know where he bought the land. I'm not going to dox him. But I know this area and I know... It is very difficult to legally get away with living off-grid in this area. You, for the most part, can't even pay to have a well dug in this area without having a building permit and all this stuff that they just don't even give out. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, Justin just bought a absolutely worthless piece of land um, with, with uh, you know sight unseen, doesn't know where it is, doesn't have the address, but like just signed some paperwork and paid in cash for a piece of land. So, so to hear that Justin spend a very large amount of money on a piece of land sight unseen i was like why in the hell did you do that <laughs> like and he told me where it was and he told me what you know he was like you know we're all gonna go live there and the place the land is i know for sure is like, uh, you know, not the easiest place to live off grid in the least bit. And I have lived off grid and I know the trouble you get in with the local law enforcement when you live off grid. And, you know, they come and inspect and when they see that you're not living there per how the area is zoned, they send the sheriffs with fucking shotguns and they kick you out. They tell you, leave this property. Um, so I was just like shocked, you know? And so he was like, oh yeah, you know, it's cool, man. Larkin Rose picked it out. And I'm like, he just picked it out? Like, he's all, yeah, man, he just picked it out. It's perfect. And I'm like, perfect? What do you mean perfect? I'm like, you haven't seen it and you don't know where it is. You don't have an address, you know? And I'm just like, oh my God, right? Cause like, I really like Justin, but he's very frustrating. Like right now, he's very frustrating friend to have um, because of his impulsivity and um, is kind of like a goofy demeanor that doesn't take anything serious. Um, so I'm just like, all right, dude, well, good luck with that. I hope that really turns out. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I want, you know, like, I want you to be a part of this. And I'm like, well, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to be in a communal living situation with Larkin Rose. Justin Padini and he's like what you don't like Mark and Rose and I'm like I don't not like Lark and Rose I just don't know if I would want to live with him you know in a, in a communal living situation 
And he's just like, oh, why? You guys don't get along? And I'm like, no, Justin. Like, it's not, you know, everything's very black and white with Justin. So, uh, so, so I'm just like, this sounds like a nightmare already, bro. And he's just like, what are you talking about? You know, it's perfect. Look, it's like 30 acres. You know, everyone could live there. He's like, this person's going to live there. 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 And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? You know, like, that doesn't seem very realistic, you know, to move 20 people into, onto this piece of land, <laughs> you know, like, right now. Um, and so I, I was, you know, it just sounds like I've seen enough of these things and I've been involved in a few and I've done it myself, gone to live, you know, out in the desert in California. And it's just, it's, you need to be very resourceful or have a whole lot of money. And even if you have a whole lot of money, you'll waste so much money just like trying to get refrigeration, you know? So... I know it's just like a, this is way bigger deal than what Justin is saying it's going to be. So I'm just like, whatever, whatever, okay, dude, okay, all right. You know, it sounds great, you know, maybe I'll swing by sometime. And he's like, dude, you should just go out there and go check it out. And, and so, uh, Allie and I are, uh, you know, we're like amateur prospectors geologists kind of like we're into geology and things like that and uh prospecting for gold and crystals and stuff precious metals uh, minerals it's kind of fun going out in the desert arizona nevada california lots of interesting geology um and there's a certain part of uh the city uh where just or the place where justin got the land that like we really wanted to go to and so I was like, all right, well, maybe we'll drive out to this spot and check it out. Because, like, mainly I'm, like, concerned because Justin bought a piece of land sight unseen across the continent from where he lives without seeing it, without having the address, you know, like. And, and so I'm like, all right, well, I got to check this out because, like, you know, I, I know about doing this and I know about actually you know i know what things you can't get away with and this just sounded like red flags real quick and so i'm like all right me and ali are gonna we're gonna go do some you know metal detecting and um you know drag around the area and maybe we'll swing by and check out your property and i have a drone so i was like i'll take some video footage of it walk around it and i'll give you my opinion and he's like dope dude cool man yeah go check it out because i haven't even seen it yet you know like you know it'd be like really cool if you could like get some video of it you know like i'm like all right Padini, like you know no big deal so so uh so justin oh, i need to get out of here hold on one sec so justin i have a meniscus problem and I can't climb into cars like I used to um so Justin there's one down there that looks too tight so okay so so Allie and I go check out um this spot of Justin's and so we first the 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 week before, you know, the week I agreed to go out there and go check it out, I was like, all right, well, get me the address or the GPS or anything so I can find where this is because, like, I'm a pretty resourceful dude. So, so, that's a 15. So, uh, 13, actually. So... So, and he's like, oh, I'll get it from you. I'll get it from you. Then he's like, he puts me in this chat, this secret chat that's called like, you know, whatever, Justin's Freedom Community or something like that. And it's got like, I don't know, a bunch of chicks in it. And um, 
And so I'm looking through it and I'm like, oh cool, this is like, these are the people that are part of this community Justin wants to do. And it's like, when, it, when Justin first said it, it was like, I don't know, it was like all these familiar names and then this, this like secret chat that he's got, it's just got like a, you know, like Cheryl Urakowski and like some Tara Green or something like just these like chicks, like whatever. And then he's like, okay, go in there and ask Larkin the address. And for one, Justin's called me. Okay. So the other thing is <laughs> Justin's called me and left me messages and texts me about this. Uh, like dozens and dozens of times like hey I'm gonna you know I'm gonna give Larkin your number he's gonna call you you guys coordinate you know and he's like trying to get me to coordinate with Larkin and I'm like dude I know Larkin he only you know like he's not gonna talk to me like about this <laughs> like we're not probably not gonna coordinate like I know Larkin pretty well like he's he does his own thing you know he's not you know, like, I don't, I don't need to coordinate, you know, to go out there, just give me the address, you know, just let them know I'm coming, you know, and he's like, oh yeah, no, they're going to be there, they're going to be there all week, he said they're going to be there all week, and through the weekend, and I'm like, okay, we'll have him, just shoot him a text, and tell him, ask him for the address, or the GPS, you know, like, I had to, it was really hard getting Justin to hit him up, and then, like, the day of I'm leaving, I sent him another message, like, hey, dude, we're leaving today, you know, can I have the address of your property? And he like sends me all these pictures of like the, it's like screenshots of like the paperwork he signed for the property or something. And there's like, no, and it's like, no, there's no address or anything. And I'm just like, Justin, like, did you run this by your family or anything? Like, like, I don't understand. Like, like, do you, do you have a lawyer? You know, like, you, you can't make moves like this. Like, you're gonna, like, you're gonna lose your money again, you know? And I just saw you lose a bunch of money, and it's really painful, you know, to watch my friends, you know, just lose money making the wrong moves when they're trying to make the wrong, right moves. So he's just like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, it's all funny. And um, so... So, uh... So, I'm gonna move that. Where's that? 12. So, um, and he's just like, oh no, Larkin, 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 just hit up Larkin, I'll hit up Larkin, have Larkin hit you up. And I'm like, and then he's like, and he's like, oh, hit up. Um, and then I knew that Larkin's lady friend, whatever her name, dragon anarchist chick um she was in that group the secret group and he's all hit up uh, uh i forgot her name hit her up and ask her to ask larkin for the gps or whatever so she had been corresponding with like the other people in the chat and the second i went in there and i was like hey dragon anarchist um you know, I don't know if Justin told you, but we're going to be swinging by just to, like, take some footage of the property and check it out. You know, could you guys, you know, hit us with the GPS or the address or whatever it is, APN number, anything, like, that I could look up on the internet to find where this place is. Crickets. And so, you know, and, like, I had told Justin, like, week before, he, he said he talked to Larkin, and Larkin was like, yeah, it's fine. So, so, I, I hear nothing back from Larkin. Um, wait. I'm gonna have to cut that part out. I don't think that's how it worked. I think I just, I hit up Dragon Anarchist. She didn't respond. Then I, I, I just, I don't think, no. No. So, I hit up the Dragon Anarchist on on the, uh, the, the little secret chat Justin has. And I'm like, hey, we're on our way. Um, 
Justin told me I could hit you up for the address or the GPS, the APN number of this, this uh, piece of land. Because we're like coming out just to check it out, get some footage if that's cool with you guys. And I hear nothing back, crickets. And like she's just been like corresponding, it seemed like. And so, and I'm like on the way, <laughs> you know, driving across several states. So California, California is a big state. Y'all don't understand. So, you know, and we had stuff we were going to do anyway, so it wouldn't have been like, it was kind of like we were, we were having a nice trip. And if we didn't get to see Justin's, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But it was the intention to go out there and check out this spot. And I was genuinely curious to see this piece of property because most property in the world is completely useless. And especially cheap property, and especially cheap property that's tons of acres, like lots of acres, like that's just garbage land. Um, so I was interested, you know, and to see where it was and what jurisdiction it's in, what county it's in, and look at the permitting and for to get a well and to have water there and to put in culverts and all that stuff because you can't live someplace and put that shit in and not expect to have the sheriffs come with shotguns and tell you to leave the property, basically. So, you know, I just didn't want to see Justin lose another large amount of money like he, I had just seen him do. You know, like, I feel like, you know, like, it's like the fatherly instinct in me. Um, so... So... We, pull, we literally drive, you know, 10 hours. Um, and I'm like, Justin, we're like literally here. Like, <laughs> I need like, can you hit this pull up? <laughs> Cause like we here. And he's all, oh, Larkin left. Here's the, here's that, here's the GPS. And he gives me the GPS and I'm like, finally, thank God. Um, you know, it's like drive all the way out here. <laughs> so we pull, we, we attempt to get to this property and the road it's on is like the worst, you know, like we have like Edison roads out here in California where it's like a dirt double, double track dirt road. And they're mildly maintained because they got to maintain the power lines and stuff. But like these these are like fire roads that were simply barely cut into the ground, like really hard. We have a Subaru WRX that's lifted. It's lifted. It's made four wheel drive. And we were having trouble getting to the property, <laughs> which means everyone who doesn't have four wheel drive is going to have problem getting to this property. And then there was no access to the property for any vehicles um there was a like a the entire property is on the side of a hillside that's like drainage for like hills up above it so every winter when it rains there's gonna like rivers basically form on this piece of property and one of the main ways to get into the property would be to, to go into one of these little drainage if they aren't rivers, I can't say they're rivers, but there are serious drainage channels, like little mini canyons that have been dug into the side of the hillside. And, and, and basically, so in the winter, you'd have to have like a, a, a four wheel drive lifted vehicle with a snorkel to get to this place. And then any other access to the property by a road is on a road that's even worse than the original road that we came in on. So right there, it's like, okay, that's not really good for picking a place to live. Um, then I, I notice right up above this property is a crazy, like, 5G death tower, the biggest one I've ever seen in my life. And the, the name of the road that this property off of is called, like, like, uh called like antenna hill or something so there's been like crazy there's like crazy antennas up there like right above the property zapping probably everything in the freaking local area so that's something that would be a 
not so great thing for a place that I would be picking for some land. Um, there's pretty much no flat. There's probably less than an acre of flat land on this property. Um, most of the property is off of a cliffside. Um, where you'd never, you wouldn't really be able to live unless you wanted to live like a Native American a thousand years ago and live amongst the rocks and stuff like that. Um, and I'm like, and then there's some structures built. And I'm like, damn, Larkin Rose is already building shit here. That's kind of nuts considering, you know, like I had already done a lot of research looking up you know, what we would need to do bare minimum to be out there. And there's like no way you can do any of these things that I'm hearing. Justin's telling me Larkin Rose is doing. He's like cutting, he's got a backhoe out there putting in culverts and, and he, he's, he's, he's digging roads with a, he's got a bobcat. He's going to dig the roads out. And then like Justin, and so I get there to, okay, so I digress. <laughs> So we get there and we're looking around. We're like, man, you know, there's like the juniper trees in that era, area are protected. Um, they're these giant bushes, right? And this property is completely covered with juniper trees that they can't cut down. So that's another not so great thing. Um, the soil is very, very, very muddy. That's not a great thing. So every year it rains a whole lot there. And basically the entire property is going to become a giant drainage for water coming off the mountain, basically a mudslide happening on this property, like every year, probably not the greatest place to buy some land. Um, if you're trying to start a big, a, a community and have like, you know, a dozen people out there, Justin told me like 20 people. So he's all, it's 30 acres. It's perfectly big enough to have 20 people. But when I get there and see what the 30 acres is, it's barely enough for maybe two homes or two families. I don't even know if I can say that. Like, the actual usable space that won't be like a mess or won't be a river half the year um, was very little. And I was just like, this property is a complete piece of shit. Like, complete piece of shit property to pick if you want to do what Justin wants to do but it's and I was just like baffled and I'm like this I mean it's it's a beautiful country but it's in a neighborhood all the other houses in this part of this state are like mansions so like the locals aren't going to be okay with 20 fucking scumbag libertarians living in their RVs out on this piece of property. It's never going to happen. And so I'm like, okay, Larkin Rose is building structures, you know, already. Holy crap, he's already, he's here. That's, it was, I was surprised to hear that, you know, and like confirm that Justin was a part of the, or Larkin was a part of this thing. Um, because I just only, you know, Justin you know, for the most part in the beginning was just talking about this. And I'm just like, you know, this dude's just like a character. Like he could just, this could all be BS. And I still don't even know if Justin's just trolling us all. Um, <laughs> honestly. Um, cause he, you know, mission accomplished, man. Um, so so, uh, So I left, we checked, I, I, I flew, the, flew the drone, got some footage, we left, and like, I, I hadn't really said anything to Allie about like my critique of the property, um, but like, once we left, she was like, I don't know, like that property's kind of a little too, too ratchet, you know, like, and it just de doesn't seem like, like it's, like she, she, she didn't have the greatest first impression of it, and I most definitely didn't have the greatest first impression of it because, like, I, I'm constant. Like, I've been looking at 
gold claims and properties in California, like as a hobby, as long as eBay has been around, as long as the internet has been around and I've attempted, you know, I've, uh, I've been a part of enough things and I've researched enough to know, you know, like that what's a good property and what's not a good property. So like, and then on top of this, you know, on top of all the, the actual physical problems with the place, it's in a county that that's not going to let a bunch of scumbag libertarians live out on that piece of land. And I was telling Justin this, you know, when he first told me he bought it, I looked it up and I was looking up. I was like, dude, we can't, you can't do what you want to do out there. You can do, you can go there and build a place on that piece of land, but only you, you know, like you might be able to sell a piece of it to someone else, but if there's not a lot of usable space, you're not going to have your occult compound, <laughs> you know, that that's just not going to be possible out here. The, you know, code inspectors will be there like flies on shit and the sheriffs will be there short soon after, you know, you will immediately lose in court. You won't be able to do what you want to do. But if you want to move out there and, and develop the place, you can yourself. But I really don't think it's most definitely not the right property if you're planning on having 20 something people out there, or even 10. It's like two, one family property, maybe two family property. And that's all there is out there are big one family properties and that's all it's zoned for are big one or not big but one family properties like like i said he might be able to split it in half and and get it zoned to have one more family there but he thinks everyone thinks th that it's the wild west you know outside the city and you can just go out there and do whatever you want but it's just not like that and i've been trying the whole time I was trying to warn Justin to this and he's just like, oh, well, we'll just figure it out. And I'm like, no, dude, you're going to figure it out the hard way and waste all your money and blow your chance at like doing something good because you want to like, like, I don't know, babysit all these people and like start a weird cult or something, Justin, like, what are you trying to do? Like, if this is your intention, this, this might not work out this way and the direction Larkin Rose is going, you know. I don't, you know, like the, the, the code inspectors will be here. They fly drones. <laughs> they look at satellite images, airplane images that are shot from above. Uh, they're really crazy in Arizona. They literally fly drones out there to look for people living. And the second they see anyone in an RV off at this property, they will be there with code enforcement and they will shut the place down. You will lose in court. They, and, and if you fight them more, they will take the property from you. Like, straight up. Like, that's what would happen. And so I'm telling Justin this on the way back from this place. And he's just like, oh, well, when? We'll just figure it out. I already bought it. And it's just like, dude, you know, like, holy crap. <laughs> Come on, man. Use your noggin. You know, but he really loves Larkin Rose. And so... You know, he's just like, he's like, dude, it's Larkin Rose. Anything he does will be amazing, you know? And like, I've seen that, you know, people were that way with Adam Kopesh, like, and it's just like, it's really creepy. But anyway, so it was all very unusual how, you know, it was really hard to get the address, you know, it was, it was all really unusual. And so Justin still hits me up like every week and is like, Hey, you know, I really want you to go to this spot again. And like, maybe like, look at, you know, like maybe designing some sort of water, you know, water tank or a cistern or something like, you know, we've been taught, like I told him, you know, like I could help him with some stuff, but like we're, me and Ellie are going to be prospecting this winter, you know, not, hanging out like and that area doesn't have much prospecting so it, it'll be cool you know to uh, uh you know help him out with a water thing at some community spot but um 
you know, I don't think that like me and Lark and Rose are going to do it together or anything like that, like he wanted, you know? So, and, and then right off the bat, I'm like, I'm already, you know, I'm already seeing like major problems with this project. So it's like, I don't know if, you know, it's going to be a good idea to throw me into the mix. Um, cause I'm going to say, you know, what I think about the situation, cause that's what I do. And, um, and so just, yeah, Justin keeps hitting me up. Like, like, man, I really want you to go out there. I'm going to talk to Larkin. I'm going to talk to Larkin and see, see what he thinks. And then he'll hit me back again. He'll be like, oh dude, uh, you know, Larkin's just like doing his thing. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like, that's what I've been telling you the whole time. Like, this is just, you have this fantasy you know, that you're going to have all these, like, smart people that you respect, you know, living underneath your wings, and I don't know, I, you know, like, I guess start a news agency, I don't even know what he wants to do, but I just see him, like, I don't want to say getting scammed, but being taken advantage of again, he just got scammed. I just watched him get scammed. And now it's just like I see him going down this path. Yes, he's an adult. Yes, um, you know, it's his money. He can do what he wants from it with it. But like as, as libertarians, like if we don't like we're supposed to self-regulate and hold accountable bad actors. But in the decade plus I've been in this movement, I've seen nothing like that happen. And I see people like Justin Pedini get victimized over and over and over and over again. So, and like, and then I feel like I'm the only one doing anything. You know, like, Padini got ripped off. I'm the only one who made videos. I made three videos about it, and they're still up right now to this day. I'm not one of these, oh, I don't want to burn bridges with, with celebritarians. Like, these people are scumbags that are scumbags. I'm not saying everyone's a scumbag, but these obvious scumbags victimize good people and they get away with it and everyone forgets and everyone is all ha ha oh well at least my my celebrity person is still you know like able to give me content like it's i don't i don't even know it's insane like like it's it's bonkers so i don't you know i'm not saying I'm not saying Larkin Rose is scamming Justin Padini, but it is in my opinion that Larkin Rose is absolutely taking advantage of Justin Padini. Um, everyone, you know, Dustin kind of talks about having money and stuff, and, um, it was always funny to me when Justin, you know, like I told you earlier, Justin was, oh, just, you know, Larkin Rose, Larkin Rose, Larkin Rose, Larkin Rose. And I know Larkin Rose, he's like a hermit. He doesn't talk to anyone. So I'm like, how is this Justin guy talking to Larkin Rose so much? Um, you know, that's why I was like, I was like, is this guy even for real? Um, so, but then it's like, oh, wait, you know, <laughs> Justin has money. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. You know, and, and Larkin Rose knows Justin loves Larkin Rose. Like, Justin loves Larkin Rose. So, and another thing. Larkin Rose, like I said, is basically a hermit. He doesn't talk to people unless he's going to make money. You know, he does Anarchapoco and he charges people an extra 25 bucks to, like, sit amongst him. You know, like, the only times he ever came on, you know, Adam's show is when he was promoting something or promoting some event or something. Like, he doesn't just socialize with randos, right, for no reason. And, um, and so, 
Justin, you know, I've known Justin a long time. Like I said, we've we podcast together and I, you know, like it's the more like we used to podcast friendly together and it's kind of changed because I'm trying to make Justin better. Like he is always out there, uh, you know, debating people or trying to get people to debate, but he, he honestly doesn't know the rules of debate. He doesn't know that there are rules of debate. He admitted this on one of our podcasts. He'd never been in debate class. He doesn't know what fallacies are. And if you listen to anything he's done, it's, it's really, there's a lot of fallacies. Like he uses a lot of bad arguments, like a lot of bad arguments. And like, we haven't noticed in the past because he's been arguing with libs and that's easy. But now, now that I, I've seen, I've debated with him and I've seen him debate with others. I can't for a, I can't imagine a reason in a million years why Larkin Rose would hang out or talk with or want to live with Justin Padini. And like, I'm not like saying that to bash Justin. I'm saying that to say how, uh, to describe Larkin Rose's personality. It has nothing to do with Justin. Justin's a fucking sweetheart. He's a teddy bear. He's honestly harmless, but I mean, I have him blocked right now, but he's been like blowing up my shit way too much. And like, I need to take a break from him every once in a while, but he's, you know, he's a teddy bear. Like I really honestly like the kid and I want the best for him, but I keep seeing people taking advantage of him and people scamming him. And like, I see me the only person talking about it. Um, cause and it's like, I, I, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just basically here to tell you what I saw. Cause everything's been really like, at a, like I, I've never seen Larkin post anything about Justin Padini. I've never seen Larkin post about doing a property with Justin Padini. I've never seen Larkin like admit to hanging out with Justin Padini or anything like that. As far as I know, I mean, maybe he has, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see why Larkin Rose would want to do something like this unless he was taking advantage of the situation and he's just like, oh, Justin's never going to move out to this property. He'll let me live here forever. All these people aren't going to move out here. And then that was probably the MO. And when I started coming around, they just basically like, oh, let's just not, you know, hopefully they'll just turn around and never come back. I mean, call me a skeptic. Maybe that's a bit much. But that's kind of how, at this point, that's kind of how I feel about it. And it, it was really bugging me. And it's been bugging me for a long time. And... I, you know, I have a bad reputation among some people for being someone who calls people out in public. And I don't understand how that's possible in a liberty community that's supposed to be self-regulating and holding itself accountable, making an example for what what the the virtues we want to we would like to see the world also take so like i i don't get it how whenever i'm like hey some narcissist is fucking people over everyone gets mad at me but i'm just going to continue to make these videos whenever i see things happening when i'm you know convinced evidence wise like i'm not gonna you know like this is just i just need more people to know what i've seen um, cause it's, it's a little fishy and, uh, and I think I just, I know, he, I know Justin's probably going to get mad at me for doing this because he loves Larkin, man, loves Larkin. So, but I don't really care because he's being, I'm seeing him being victimized 
again for the second time this year because he won't keep his mouth shut about having money. Like, it's like, <laughs> people, like, get a fucking job. Buy your own fucking properties. Like, I just, I can't believe the people and the people looked up to in this movement and why they're looked up to, you know? I'm not saying, and I'm like, like not saying I, I have anything to offer. It's just baffling, you know, how much victimization I have seen within this movement. Like, in so many, so many different levels. And I just, I don't know, I just, I had to, I had to make a video. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying Larkin's scamming him, but it looks a little fishy. And I, I, in my heart, don't think Justin's ever going to move out to this place. And if he does, he won't last a week. Um, you know, no one will last a week where he's trying to live. Um, it's just not legally possible. It's a fantasy. You can't do it. And Larkin's already out there trying to do it. And Justin is paying for this stuff. And I feel Larkin is just building his place. He's already named the place. He already named it. Larkin Rose named this property Shiloh. Justin's property. Larkin already named it. And he's out there building on it like it's his property. Because I think he doesn't think Justin's going to move out there. And he thinks that Justin will let him live there forever. Because Justin's, you know, Justin's a fanboy. And Justin's like, you know. <laughs> if you know Justin, you know Justin. But I just had to write, I just had to put something together. Because it's been really bothering me. And like, you know, I know tons of people love Lark and Rose. Um, I've, in my experience, I find him, uh, to have really good common sense, but he's kind of a hothead and he's definitely, uh, way into the scientism, way too much, um, way too far, far too much. He, he, uh, you know, has a bunch of, uh, claims that he can't back up with concrete proof and I've called him out for it before. And he basically like went full ad hominem on me and sent his minions to go ad hominem on me, you know, because I call I called out the premise that he he has no foot to stand on while proving anything about space or dinosaurs or anything like that, um, you know, outside of what he was taught in elementary school and taught by the media and taught by, um, you know, the powers that be that want us thinking a certain way. Um, you know, we've been lied to about history 100%. So, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, whatever. Lark and Rose, whatever, you know. But, like, seems like Justin's getting... Seems like Justin's getting scammed again, in my opinion. You know, it's a pretty tricky... Tricky, tricky... It would be, it would be tricky for me to... Pr no, actually, in court, I think I could probably prove it in court. Um, but, um, Justin, you know, Justin won't agree with what I'm saying. Um, and Larkin won't agree with what I'm saying, most likely. But, uh, I don't know. That's it. Peace.